Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and today I've got a bit of Protoss on Zerg action coming up. Whirlwind is going to be the map and it is between two pretty awesome players. So I'm just going to jump straight into that and introduce them. In the top left position spawning as the red Protoss player, it's Hello Kitty. And his opponent spawning down in the bottom left, the blue Zerg from Team Evil Geniuses, it's Suppy. Now, Suppy and Hello Kitty, they're pretty awesome, and they're busy talking about that they should practice together because they're not in the same groups. I'm assuming this is WCS groups. Um, this is from a replay pack I got a little while ago, so I've been really tied up, obviously, with like the Dutch Starcraft League Finals, WCS EU Challenger, um, ESET, UK Masters, and all those things, so... I've kind of I've built up a bit of a bank of replays that I'm going to try and cast. I know I've only been putting up about a game a day where some of you have got slightly accustomed to me putting up like three or four games a day where I was I got slightly addicted to casting lots and I still am casting the same amount but there's just lots of live stuff involved too. So hopefully I'll be able to up that a little bit, get a few more videos out daily and things like that. Um especially during the WCS off season. I'm going to try and do more there, but yeah, let's just take a look at what these two could be doing. They're spawning in the vertical position so that actually, well, it's good for Suppy to be honest, because Suppy he can expand here and take the third that he wants, which is down to the bottom right. Um, it can be really awkward actually if you um, are a Zerg player who spawns up in, if they spawn in opposite positions basically, because then you want to take this third, but then you're expanding towards your opponent, which is never something that you really want to happen, and then you've got to make that awkward choice of, well, do I go further away, or do I just take a closer expansion, and it's it's not ideal. So these spawn positions are good for Suppy. Um, for Hello Kitty as well, he's got some nice options once he really realizes where Suppy has spawned to potentially put things like Stargates down at the bottom of this cliff here, reducing the rush distance to get through. So lots of nice options sitting around for both players, but Kitty just going to be going for a gateway expansion play, and it's really safe to do so because, well, it's Whirlwind, which admittedly is a four-player map, so it's unlikely that you're going to get super early aggression, although it does still happen. But the key thing is this ramp is really quite wide, and getting a wall off here can be a little bit awkward and things like that. Gateway expands are... They're safe. You can get a couple of units out. You're not too far behind economically. The double, the four drones in gas here just means that you can really be very, very aggressive. And you can get down the mothership court early. You can also get down tech relatively early. And that's going to be all beneficial for Kitty, especially if he wants to go for something like a Stargate. And that's really what... I'm thinking is a good possibility. Other things are just the normal robotics bay, four, uh, three additional gateways being added on to the gate already there to go into some four gate pressure with the mothership core. Also quite easily doable. So lots of different options available. Meanwhile for Suppy, he's probably just going to take a quick third. There we go, third base, boom. And he's going to follow that up with two gas, most likely at around the 40 to 50 supply mark, get a roach rolling down nine times out of ten, and then just really be defensive and sit back, maybe come poke and prod a bit. In terms of mid-game strategy, he could go for Swarm Host, he could go for Roach Hydra, he could go for Mutalisks as well. Mutalisks on this map are actually quite nice in, because you can just come in and really harass the main base quite nicely and the natural base very comfortably too. So lots of different options available to both players which makes things fun. For the moment, Kitty, two gateways. Are we going to get the third? No, we're not. Okay, so it's not going to be some delayed 4 gate pressure, at least initially it's not seeming that way. Um, could come down because there will be enough minerals for a 4th gate soon, but looking just pretty happy. It's going to be a Twilight Council, so this is still really nice. Could be DTs, could also be Blink, different options available. But DTs, probably something you do want to be a little bit cautious about because... Yeah, they can be very powerful, especially with these three gates. It's You always know there's something techie coming behind if your opponent goes through a gateway expand. And you see only two gates here. A third gate is a big giveaway. Forge is another nice giveaway there. But Sentry on its way down. Here's the Roach Roar, just as expected from Suppy. So nothing nothing going too bonkers as of yet. But this is still early game phases, so don't have to worry too much. These overlords are going to just come in for a little bit of scout out. If he spots that Twilight Council, that would be a really good read for him. But he's not going to be able to. He's going to go off to the side. That means this Stalker will come to be able to take it out before there's any kind of reveal of what there is and there's the dark shrine coming down from kitty this is unscouted at the moment the lair is not down no spore crawlers as of yet and so these dts can potentially do some nice damage what it really what suppy really needs to do now is get some detection and identify what's actually coming here but that's going to be a little bit difficult for him because now there's a fourth gate here if we look at suppy's vision he is going to start trying to come and poke and prod in he hasn't scouted out the natural yet 
So if this gateway is done before this Zergling gets up, which is going to be the case, he's not actually going to be able to see that quite yet. His first scout is going to see these four gates. He's not going to be able to easily tell when they came down and get a good read of what his opponent's planning. Maybe expecting some pressure. Sees the good scout on the pylon there. That will get pushed out. The probe trying to hide in the corner. Zerglings aren't going to see it. Nice little probe. Good probe, good pylon placement, all nice. We've got spine crawlers coming down at the third, just really trying to be defensive, but roaches, they're also coming down, but still no less, still no spore crawlers. The dark shrine is but just 12 in-game seconds away from completion. This could be really, really traumatic for Sabi. Oh, the Zerglings, the Zerglings, they've seen it. Okay, Zerglings have found the pylon. This is massive because now those DTs are not going to be able to warp in on the other side of the map. Two DTs are warping in, though, at the other pylon that is unbeknown. Four DTs in total. This is the moment where you're just like, please don't have detection, please don't have detection. And this is where Suppy can take a lot of damage. DTs coming in everywhere. This is going to be hugely problematic. Where are all the DTs going? We've got one DT swiping around there. Spore Call is getting thrown down as a matter of urgency, but just watch this. Watch the worker kill count. Slowly creep higher. Interestingly, focus down the Spine Crawler, not the Spore Crawler. Drones getting pulled everywhere. That Spore Crawler will get taken out, means that it probably won't get done in time. These Spore Crawlers probably not going to get done in time either. Um, one may just finish up there, so that means that the natural base somewhat safe for a brief second. 43 health, that would have gone down. But the DT in the main is still doing a nice bit of damage. DT down here at the third is also picking stuff off but a sport caller is in position there as well more drones are going down this is really really good for Hello Kitty at the moment and Suppy just doesn't have an answer to it he's got a couple of rotors running around but just so many drones going down this this DT has got 14 kills 15 kills it will now die but 15 oh no it's not gonna die it actually manages to get away that's crazy good oh that is so lucky okay 19 workers have been killed this game Okay, that takes the probe count 52 to 36. Such a good opening position for Hello Kitty at the moment. What Suppy really needs to do is drone like a madman. He also needs to make sure that he's injecting into this third base ASAP to get as many lava available as he can. But he's got to take a risk because if he doesn't get that drone count up quite high, this third base is just going to mean that Hello Kitty is going to pull further and further ahead economically. It's something that you do not want to be occurring and you've got to try and defend it as best you can. Now, as we see, DTs are coming in once more, but there is a single spore call here but no units unfortunately to try and defend so a couple more drones are going to be going down it's still a bit of a nightmare this dt 18 kills hero dt or what seriously that dt absolutely insanely good also how do spore crawlers bleed that much without disappearing like that's that must be like liters of blood coming out every second it's crazy it's like a fire hydrant pylon is now taken out but this third already up we've got more Cannons coming down, more gateway units on their way out. In terms of tech, Robotics Bay is getting placed. A second Robotics Facility, so double Colossi production will be occurring shortly. All the while, it's worth noting that Suppy's still down at 43 drones, up against 57 probes. Such an amazing spot. Blink also now completing. The ability to morph in some Archons is also a great spot too. So... Yeah, just with 22 workers killed, it's looking really nice. The Phoenix are going to get a nice little scout out here. This is another good thing as well. Getting that hallucinated Phoenix down soon to get a good read on your opponent. The upgrades are flying out at the moment. Plus one already finished. No upgrades as of yet. Four up. He's getting plus one melee attack. Going to come up with a little bit of counter-aggression or at least try to. And there isn't a huge amount here, so this could be successful. Potentially, Suppy needs to go in relatively soon, though, because there are some immortals out coming down on the field. I do believe there's one up on its way. Good force fields for Hello Kitty there, but the sentries are starting to get focused. Nice time warps are going to occur, and for the moment, Su uh, Suppy will not be able to break this defense. A spire coming down here for Suppy, so he's going for a little bit of counter-aggression. The hallucinated phoenix still just poking and prodding around. These time warps are just going to really prevent anything too much going down. Two more good force fields, trapping a couple of roaches there. And with the stalkers blinking in, more roaches are going to go down. So, so far, Kitty just trading really cost effectively, losing about half the resources of that of his opponent. These roaches haven't done too much, and the first two colossi are soon to be popping out on the field. Plus two nearly done, extended thermal lance also on its way. And once you start getting all of these things mixing into... To, into the army for Hello Kitty. Suppy's really got to get an answer to it. He's going to need a lot of Corruptors out or Mutalisks very soon in order to deal with these Colossi. The other thing you can start looking at too is if he wants to be going for say for example some Vipers in the late game. He needs that Infestation Pit up to Hive Tech ASAP. There's the Mutalisk coming down as well as a fourth base so Suppy is not out of this yet. He's actually starting to really level out the work count. It's exactly equal so still good for Hello Kitty but Suppy now he's got the income he needs 
and could potentially do a lot of harassment damage here with these muters. There's no cannons down in the main base, not really anything to defend with. All of the units are very far placed down in order to make sure the third is defended. So this could be a nice little bit of aggression potentially for Suppy if he's able to get in there. But ooh, a war prism coming down. This is where warpins can get very exciting. We've got a move out from Hello Kitty as well, just as the muters are going to be flying into the main base. Is there enough energy for a mass recall? Yes, there is. That could be required because otherwise a lot of probes are going going to go down here. Straight away the damage starts getting done. Are we going to see the mass recall? No, we're not. So the muters going to start doing a nice amount of damage here. And this is where probes start dying. Stalkers are coming in, but they are Blink Stalkers too with 2-0 upgrades. That means they're going to trade really nicely against those mutalisks, especially in the low numbers. But Hello Kitty, he's pushing in for the kill, heading towards that third. Going to see some units coming out, picking off two mutalisks here. Always a nice little snipe there. They're very expensive, very gas heavy, but... One Colossus does fall. A massive surround comes down here. Hello Kitty is in a tough spot because these Colossi getting focused very quickly. The Mutalisks are going down though to these Stalkers and Sentries. And there's still a single Colossus remaining. More Warpins did come down from this War Prism. And the push is making its way up into the natural base. The Spine Crawlers just finishing up. Will Suppy be able to hold? Well the Mutalisks are doing as much damage as they can. A Time Warp is going to go down there on very little. But still the Stalkers are making short work of these Mutalisks. The Colossus at the back tearing through these Spine Crawlers. Drones even getting pulled which is never a good sign. Supply count heavily favoring Hello Kitty and Suppy knows it. GG out of the game. Congratulations to Hello Kitty for winning that. That was a fun game. If you enjoyed that, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with yet another new cast right here on this channel. So I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.